is Steve Foreman, Fine Artist. And what I like to do is do a demonstration of what I do when I provide the final layer to my painting. My final layer for all of my paintings that is going out of my studio is going to be a varnish layer. But before I do that varnish layer, what I have a tendency to do is oil out the painting, do an oil layer. And what I do with that layer is go throughout the whole painting, looking at the various colors. You can see I have dark colors, I have brown colors which tend to be very flat and matte and hungry for oil. And what I do is I just kind of paint in the oil, just to, and I use about 50% gal kit, 50% gamsol. Sometimes I use 50% stand oil and 50% gam salt, and sometimes I use 50% refined linseed oil and stand oil, and sometimes I use 30% uh, stand oil, 30% linseed, or any combination of those three, but I always keep one thing consistent, and I keep my gam salt at about 50%. So, because I don't want too much oil going into the painting when I'm oiling out. So this painting has been oiled out, and what I've done is I've gone in, I covered every inch of this painting, back, sides, and front, with the oil. And I use 50% Gal Kit, 50% Stand Oil, made by Gam Gambling Company. And of course, I use Gambling Paints as well on this painting. And um, in doing so, um, I was able to just let that paint, that oil, go into certain colors more, just to saturate those colors. And I'm, what I'm looking for is just that richness to kind of come up. I call it richness. Some people call it saturate. When I say saturate, I mean the oil saturates physically into the paint and bind with the paint. Okay. It also brings up the saturation of the color or the intensity of the color. In other words, the greens look more greens, the blues look more blue, the browns look more brown, the blacks look more rich. And there, some people want that flat look. Some people want a satin look, or I call a luster look which is not really shiny, but it's not really matte and flat either. And some people like a gloss look. Now what I'm going for with this particular painting is just that jewelness and the richness of the oil. So I'm going for just a, a little bit more than satin, but not quite super, super high gloss, but a nice kind of glossy, lustery kind of feel. Because I painted this painting with impasto, with nice, rich brush strokes, now the painting does take a while to dry. And so what you want to do is just go and pinch your fingernail into the thicker pieces of paint to see if that paint gives. Because what happens is when you're painting with oil paint, what happens is oil paint really does take years to fully cure. We're not going to say dry like an acrylic. Acrylic actually, ev actually evaporates and dries. Oil paint cures and catalyzes. It reacts with oxygen and various other molecules in the atmosphere, and it basically exchanges oxygen and various other molecules. So therefore, humidity, when you have more hydrogen in the air, slows down the dry time of your, your mediums as well as the oils that's actually in the pigments itself that comes from the manufacturer. So <clears throat> what you want to do is just make sure that you allow 24 to 48 hours after you finish your painting with the Galka system. So that's great. You don't have to wait months, you don't have to wait weeks uh, before you can oil out or varnish. All you have to really wait is 24 to 48 hours, which is great. Now, sometimes if you apply your oil out layer really thick and you really want a lot of gloss or your paint's really, you, your paint's really thick, you're going to have to wait 72 or more hours or give it a week. However, um, I find that, you know, when you have clients, they're waiting for their painting. You really can't afford to keep the painting for weeks and weeks and months and months. So therefore, you really want to use a fast system. And I like gambling. First of all, a gambling varnish I could use. And I'll get the gambling varnish right now. I can use the gambling varnish on acrylics as well as oil paint, which is really, really great because it's a very versatile thing. Now, I don't have to worry about mixing the chemistry like I do with my oils because I want an exact finish. Now, again, like I was saying before, I don't try to saturate my colors with the varnish. I use the varnish exclusively for UV, dust, dirt, grime, and environmental protection. That's essentially all I want to do with this varnish. I see it as a seal to seal my painting. My oil layer, that I do just after I finish doing the actual paint marks 
or the paint brush strokes, the actual painting, then I do my oil. I lay 48 hours to 72 hours or more for that oil layer to dry. Uh, and then and it depends on if I think it's dry enough. Of course, the oil layer is still drying. So apply your varnish while your oil layers are still curing. So I should use the word cure and not dry, but it's still setting up. So this is great because a lot of times, you know, with other paintings I've done with traditional oil sets and other brands, you literally have to wait months before you can provide varnish. And then sometimes this stuff has to go to a gallery or a client and you need it quick. So I switched to Gamvar varnish. And I do this as a protective layer. Now, the great thing about this, all you need is some Gamsol, which is a very mild mineral spirit. It's basically, I think it's non-toxic, so, and it's odorless, so it doesn't make any odor. And it's great on your brushes. You can clean your brushes with Gamvar. A lot of varnishes will kill a brush, so you have to go get the cheap brushes because um, you can't get the stuff out. It's kind of like if you ever do and done any uh, uh, shellacking or polyurethane, that stuff sets up and the brush is never quite the same after you use it. The great thing about this is it cleans up very, very nice out of the paintbrush as well after you're finished. And the great thing about this is you can apply this straight out of the bottle onto the painting. And I'm going to show you right now how I go about putting my last final coat on a painting, which is going to be Gamvar. And generally, sometimes people do one to three coats. Now, that's great if you're trying to build the luster with the varnish. I don't do that. I build the luster with the oil. And it's part of my painting because sometimes I might even go in with some paint and provide a little bit of um, tone <laughs> to the oils when I'm oiling out as well. So my oil out layer is just to make sure everything is even. I do that in that particular treatment of my painting, which is one of the last things. What I'm really doing with this is just applying this evenly to the whole thing, somewhat thinly because I've established the, the shininess or lack of shininess, whichever I'm going for, of the painting. I've established that with the oiling and the painting part of the painting. So I don't necessarily get surprised too much at the end of my paintings with areas that's really, really matte and <laughs> other areas. Now, if you leave this for a month, you might start to see some areas, they call it sinking in, get just a little bit more matte. But again, that's why I go in with different layers and sometimes I'm still painting and I'm just saturating those more porous paints with oil in my oil and out treatment. Sometimes that can take a long time because if your studio is real humid, it, that's this section, the paint is finished, but it can still take uh, weeks <laughs> to get the painting to your, at the position where you can provide the, the varnish. So what I'm going to do, and when I do that, I use several materials. I use Gamsol, of course. I use the Gamsol varnish. I like a clean, clear bowl. And just to let you know what I use for my oil and out is gal kit. And I use the several brushes. I use brushes to make sure no dust, dirt, or lint from my studio might have collected on the painting. So I would basically give it the painting one last good sweep and dusting, if any dust. But this is basically really fresh because the last time I oiled this was about 48 hours, 72 hours ago. So therefore, uh, or more. So therefore, this painting has not had a lot of time to collect any dust or dirt, but I always make absolutely sure by using a brush to clean it. I use this one for more details. I like to use a little filber because I can get into the nooks and crannies, and then I like to use this like angle brush, big one, nice big two and a half inch brush. These are soft bristles. This is a bristle brush, and this is a synthetic. Now, Gam, I apply the, 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 the varnish with the Gamvar varnish brush made by Gambling Company. I like this brush because this brush, I haven't used it yet, it's still in the big packaging, but I have, with other brushes, uh, sometimes you can see the brush strokes, the final brush strokes, since it's the last thing I want, I heard this brush does not leave brush strokes. So that's very important to apply your oil and your varnish layer with no brush strokes. So let me show you how I go about that. <clears throat> uh, another thing that I do, a <laughs> tool that I have when I do this process, which I did not discuss, is paper towels. Okay? 
So what I do is, the first step I do is I take my two brushes and I just kind of beat them this way. <clears throat> and then I just go through the painting and just sweep off any potential dust or dirt or even sheen. Sometimes the oil just has this little oily sheen and sometimes you go put the varnish on and the varnish will just kind of roll and beat up on that sheen and won't bind to the oil layer underneath or the painting and the oil layers underneath. Also, as you know, I put push pins on the back of the painting and the push pins are designed that when I go to paint the back with varnish, I can immediately turn it around and focus on the business side of the painting. So with the smaller brush, I might go into little areas like the eyes or anything with a lot of texture in it, like these grassy foliage areas. And just make sure there's no dust or little hairs or whatever might have gotten into the painting, you know? And I kind of look around for that and this looks pretty clean. So that's basically what I do there. I just kind of go in and make sure everything is lint and dust, as dust free as possible. And then I'm gonna sit the painting down and I sit it down on these little two by fours face down first. I get my clean glass bowl and I just take a dry paper towel and go inside to make sure it's dust free. I don't want any debris and I almost kind of want, almost want to polish it in the inside just to make sure there's nothing in there that's going to get into my gamva. Just put a little bit there of the gamva. I'll put that there so you can see. And I'm going to use and on the back, I don't use the Gamva brush. I just use a regular brush. And my, the filber that I showed you earlier, I use that brush to kind of um, apply the varnish over top my oil layer because I apply oil to the back as well. So I have my painting layers there. Of course, I have my ground and I have my painting layers. And what I want to do is just work this in. Again, this is a protective layer. I'm not really trying to make a finish with this. So I just want to make sure it covers. So I'm just kind of working this in. Now this brush is a synthetic brush. It's fairly soft, but still somewhat rigid. This brush is fairly soft, but still somewhat rigid. So I can get into those nicks and crannies, but you don't want to pull up <laughs> if your painting happens to be still a little bit wet you don't really want to pull even the oil layer that I have protecting the painting you don't want to pull anything up okay once I get the back then I go to the sides and I just start at the top and again you don't need a really really thick application of this because again the way I use it I just use that oil mixture that I talked to you about before now if you're trying to use the varnish to bring out you don't want to oil out your painting you want the varnish to do it and the reason the reason I like to oil my painting before I varnish, because in the future, say if this painting does get dirty, you know, it's in a room and dust and grime and over time, say 40 years down the road, dust and grime gets on the painting and she has to take it to a conservator or she can do it herself. She don't even have to take it. All you need to do is get some of this Gamvar, Gamsol, I'm sorry and a nice clean probably a poly cotton cloth and just wipe this varnish off just keep buffing it until it's gone and you will get down to and in my paintings you will still see the oil layer so you would think oh varnish is still there nope that's the oil layer you'll get down to that layer and it was still the colors will still be saturated because a lot of times people use like a, a hydrogen peroxide type of chemical, or some type of chemical like that, a conservative type of chemical, to really, really clean the painting after they remove the varnish layer. Okay, and uh, when you do that, you can dry out colors that you haven't oiled out, or that's already dusty. Because again, if you don't apply a varnish layer, 
what happens is, think of, on a microscopic level, think of your painting as though it is little canyons and valleys and rivers and streams <laughs> and mountains and, you know, stuff can fit into those little areas, dirt and grime, and really change the way the painting looks. Okay, so now once I have that established on the side and back, I flip it around to the business side of the painting. I'll flip the painting this way so you guys can see it. Um, at this point, I'm not really looking at anything, but just full coverage. So I'm not really doing anything. Now on this side, I do I skip the bowl altogether. I just skip this because I just poured enough in to really cover the sides and the back. What I do with this, because this is already mixed by Camden for me to be perfect. And this is the gloss. Now they make three different types. They make gloss, they make semi-gloss, and then they make uh, a matte. I like the gloss because I can control it by simply just putting it on real thin because I happen to know, or I just yeah, happen to know that you just put one layer on an already matte painting. It's gonna basically make it almost semi-gloss. So what I'm gonna do, what I want is a little bit of a gloss. So I pour like a, a 50 cent piece or maybe a dollar, you know, like a small pancake. <laughs> you know, worth. And now what I do is once I do that, I'm going to the Gamvar and they give this nice little brush here. Now this takes about 24 hours to set up. So the great thing about using this varnish again is that you have plenty of time to work it. And I just pour it in the middle and I start with a cross technique, up and down. Then once I get it up and down, I work it left to right so north and south then east to west and i start out with a little pancake to get it up and down covering the whole height and the great thing about this brush and this doesn't this technique i don't have to dap it against the side or get some of the um if i get too much gamvar on generally i don't get too much i can just wipe it off to the side you know of the painting where it doesn't matter if that's a little bit heavy or not because it's the side or the back so I like this technique. And again, this is just to protect it from UV. Now, if I think it wants a little bit more, because all I'm going to do is one coat. And again, there's no possibility of me introducing any dirt from a bowl because that process has been skipped. So sometimes keeping it simple is better. Okay, I'm just going up and down. And then what I do is, sometimes I do a little cross too, just to make sure it's in all sectors of the painting. And then what I do is just kind of work it in after that. And I think this is all I'm gonna need of this. And all I'm trying to do is make sure that this interfaces with that oil layer I have on there and paint layer, because even though there's oil on it, I didn't put it on so heavy. I, did, I do tend to put it on heavy, <laughs> I have to tell you. I do do my oil out layer, like I say, 50% oil, and I do let it sit for about an hour or so before I wipe it up, or attempt to wipe it up. <clears throat> okay, again, if you get any access, you just take it to the side and just wipe it off to the side. Very, very nice technique for applying your varnish layer and just use it. And then when I'm finished, I just seal up my top. I only use absolutely the amount of varnish that I need for this particular painting. Just the amount of varnish that I need. Okay? And not a dime more. This is all wet, so I can just work it. And like I say, if some inadvertent dust might, you might not have got with the first brushing. And I brush it in a, hard, in a vertical position so that the brush can fall to the ground. Of course, when you're doing your varnish, always do the varnish in a horizontal, absolutely flat position, making sure, because you want this layer to be absolutely flat. Of course, when I oil out, I oil out in an absolutely flat position as well. Okay, so now, does the colors come out even more? Maybe, but the oil layer has done that. <laughs> Uh, if I want just a little bit more oil in certain areas, 
especially like in the foliage where it's not mattering as much because it's not like the face where everybody's going to be looking. If I get a little too much there, or if I just want that to be saturated, you just pour a couple of drops more there. Just say, get that, you know, get that in there, you know, and just get, and then I could take a little from here, see? And what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing I do in my oil layer. I'm looking, I'm still, as the artist, I'm still looking at the painting, seeing what areas can be saturated even more than what I've done with the oiling in terms of just that varnish just getting in there and just evening out this entire painting. Now, you're not going to see a drastic difference in my varnish as you do with some other people demonstrate. I think they do that so you can see the difference. Now, if you want to see that, check out my oiling video. I have a video where I show you how to oil out. You're going to see the difference between some of the drier paints and some of the paints that seem tend to hold oil born. Okay, now once I get that, what I do is I look at the light, I take my head down, and I really, really look at the light, and I use this brush, and I really try to get this, this varnish over everything, especially the face. I don't want anything to be too different, and I'm going really every which direction with this. I do this the same with my oil, but this is a lot nicer um, in terms of the oil and out. The oil can start to get tacky, especially gambling oils can start to get tacky relatively quickly. Now, <clears throat> once I feel like I've got everything touched with this oil layer, with this gambling layer, and I feel like it's clean and it's nice, that's it. I stop. And I just wait 24 hours until this sets up. Now, what I also do, what you can do is you can get a blow dryer. Blow dryers are nice because it's made to take the hydrogen out of the atmosphere or the water out of the atmosphere and give you back this dry air, the dry oxygen, and warm dry oxygen. So it helps the oil process to dry faster. I have basically varnish everywhere. This thing is wet on the back and the front and the sides. This is going to take about 24 hours to dry. I put it on fairly thin. One coat is all I need. And once it's 24 hours to dry, it's basically great. I might give it a little bit more time before I go to box and ship it. And that's what I'll do on the next video. On the next video, I will show you how I take this painting and how I apply the hardware for hanging it on the walls. Of course, she wanted this painting to be a gallery wrap painting. So basically, this painting is designed to not have a frame. But if she wants to add a frame, she could add a frame at any later, later date, but I'm going to show you how did I do that, and I'm also going to show in a later video how I ship the painting, get the painting of this size, it's a 24 by 36 painting, to give 36 inches, and to give this its final, to put this in the box and get it ready to be shipped. Okay? All right, well, see you on the next video. Thank you for being with me. Bye-bye.